the Bible, and the Catechism, in a year. Day 28 From the Book of Genesis Joseph's brothers go to Egypt. When Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt, go down and buy grain for us there, that we may live, and not die. So ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Benjamin, Joseph's brother, with his brothers, for he feared that harm might befall him. Thus the sons of Israel came to buy among the others who came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over the land, he it was who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came, and bowed themselves before him with their faces to the ground. Joseph saw his brothers, and knew them, but he treated them like strangers and spoke roughly to them. Where do you come from? He said. They said, from the land of Canaan, to buy food. Thus Joseph knew his brothers, but they did not know him. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed of them, and he said to them, You are spies, you have come to see the weakness of the land. They said to him, No, my lord, but to buy food have your servants come. We are all sons of one man, we are honest men, your servants are not spies. He said to them, No, it is the weakness of the land that you have come to see. And they said, We, your servants, are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, It is as I said to you who are spies. By this you shall be tested, by the life of Pharaoh, you shall not go from this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you, and let him bring your brother, while you remain in prison, that your words may be tested, whether there is truth in you, or else, by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. And he put them all together in prison for three days. On the third day Joseph said to them, Do this and you will live, for I fear God, if you are honest men, let one of your brothers remain confined in your prison, and let the rest go and carry grain for the famine of your households, and bring your youngest brother to me, so your words will be verified, and you shall not die. And they did so. Then they said to one another, In truth we are guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the distress of his soul, when he besought us and we would not listen, therefore is this distress come upon us. And Reuben answered them, did I not tell you not to sin against the lad? But you would not listen, so now there comes a reckoning for his blood. They did not know that Joseph understood them, for there was an interpreter between them. Then he turned away from them and wept, and he returned to them and spoke to them. And he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. And Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with grain, and to replace every man's money in his sack, and to give them provisions for the journey. This was done for them. Joseph's brothers return to Canaan. Then they loaded their asses with their grain, and departed. And as one of them opened his sack to give his ass provender at the lodging place, he saw his money in the mouth of his sack, and he said to his brothers, My money has been put back, here it is in the mouth of my sack. At this their hearts failed them, and they turned trembling to one another, saying, What is this that God has done to us? When they came to Jacob their father in the land of Canaan, they told him all that had befallen them, saying, The man, the lord of the land, spoke roughly to us, and took us to be spies of the land. But we said to him, We are honest men, we are not spies, we are twelve brothers, sons of our father, one is no more, and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the lord of the land, said to us, By this I shall know that you are honest men, leave one of your brothers with me, and take grain for the famine of your households, and go your way. Bring your youngest brother to me, then I shall know that you are not spies but honest men, and I will deliver to you your brother, and you shall trade in the land. As they emptied their sacks, behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack, and when they and their father saw their bundles of money, they were dismayed. And Jacob their father said to them, You have bereaved me of my children, Joseph is no more, and Simeon is no more, and now you would take Benjamin, all this has come upon me. Then Reuben said to his father, Slay my two sons if I do not bring him back to you, put him in my hands, and I will bring him back to you. But he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he only is left. If harm should befall him on the journey that you are to make, you would bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to shoal. The brothers come again, bringing Benjamin. 
Now the famine was severe in the land. And when they had eaten the grain which they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, Go again, buy us a little food. But Judas said to him, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face, unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, You shall not see my face, unless your brother is with you. Israel said, Why did you treat me so ill as to tell the man that you had another brother? They replied, The man questioned us carefully about ourselves and our kindred, saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? What we told him was in answer to these questions, could we in any way know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Judah said to Israel his father, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and you and also our little ones. I will be surety for him, of my hand you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever, for if we had not delayed, we would now have returned twice. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this, take some of the choice fruits of the land in your bags, and carry down to the man a present, a little balm and a little honey, gum, pistachio nuts, and almonds. Take double the money with you, carry back with you the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks, perhaps it was an oversight. Take also your brother, and arise, go again to the man, may God Almighty grant you mercy before the man, that he may send back your other brother and Benjamin. If I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. So the men took the present and they took double the money with them, and Benjamin, and they arose and went down to Egypt, and stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Bring the men into the house, and slaughter an animal and make ready, for the men are to dine with me at noon. The man did as Joseph bade him, and brought the men to Joseph's house. And the men were afraid because they were brought to Joseph's house, and they said, It is because of the money, which was replaced in our sacks the first time, that we are brought in, so that he may seek occasion against us and fall upon us, to make slaves of us and seize our asses. So they went up to the steward of Joseph's house, and spoke with him at the door of the house, and said, O, oh, my Lord, we came down the first time to buy food, and when we came to the lodging place we opened our sacks, and there was every man's money in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight, so we have brought it again with us, and we have brought other money down in our hand to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks. He replied, Rest assured, do not be afraid, your God and the God of your father must have put treasure in your sacks for you, I received your money. Then he brought Simeon out to them. And when the man had brought the men into Joseph's house, and given them water, and they had washed their feet, and when he had given their asses provender, they made ready the present for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. When Joseph came home, they brought into the house to him the present which they had with them, and bowed down to him to the ground. And he inquired about their welfare, and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? They said, Your servant our father is well, he is still alive. And they bowed their heads and made obeisance. And he lifted up his eyes, and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your youngest brother, of whom you spoke to me? God be gracious to you, my son. Then Joseph made haste, for his heart yearned for his brother, and he sought a place to weep. And he entered his chamber and wept there. Then he washed his face and came out, and controlling himself he said, Let food be served. They served him by himself, and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright and the youngest according to his youth, and the men looked at one another in amazement. Portions were taken to them from Joseph's stable, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs. So they drank and were merry with him. From the Book of Psalms Triumphant Song of Confidence A Psalm of David The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me, uttering slanders against me, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, 
all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in His temple. For He will hide me in His shelter, in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of His tent. He will set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up, above my enemies round about me. And I will offer in His tent, sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Thou hast said, Seek ye my face. My heart says to thee, Thy face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not thy face from me. Turn not thy servant away in anger. Thou who hast been my help. Cast me not off, forsake me not. O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me. But the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord. And lead me on a level path. Because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me. And they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yea, wait for the Lord. From the Gospel of Matthew The Tradition of the Elders Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat. He answered them, And why do you transgress the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God commanded, Honor your father and your mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him surely die. But you say, If any one tells his father or his mother, What you would have gained from me is given to God, he need not honor his father. So, for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God. You hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. Things that defile. And he called the people to him and said to them, Hear and understand, not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? He answered, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone, they are blind guides. And if a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain the parable to us. And he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach, and so passes on? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a man. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. From the Catechism The Implications of Faith in One God Believing in God, the only one, and loving Him with all our being has enormous consequences for our whole life. It means coming to know God's greatness and majesty, behold, God is great and we know Him not. Therefore, we must serve God first. It means living in thanksgiving, if God is the only one, everything we are and have comes from Him, what have you that you did not receive? What shall I render to the Lord for all His bounty to me? It means knowing the unity and true dignity of all men, everyone is made in the image and likeness of God. It means making good use of created things, faith in God, the only one, leads us to use everything that is not God only insofar as it brings us closer to Him, and to detach ourselves from it insofar as it turns us away from Him. My Lord and my God, take from me everything that distances me from You. My Lord and my God, give me everything that brings me closer to You. My Lord and my God, detach me from myself to give my all to you. It means trusting God in every circumstance, even in adversity. 
A prayer of St. Teresa of Jesus wonderfully expresses this trust. Let nothing trouble you. Let nothing frighten you. Everything passes. God never changes. Patience obtains all. Whoever has God wants for nothing. God alone is enough. In brief, here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The Supreme Being must be unique, without equal. If God is not one, He is not God. Faith in God leads us to turn to Him alone as our first origin and our ultimate goal, and neither to prefer anything to Him nor to substitute anything for Him. Even when He reveals Himself, God remains a mystery beyond words, if you understood Him, it would not be God. The God of our faith has revealed Himself as He who is, and He has made Himself known as abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. God's very being is truth and love.